So the second part of chapter seven, uh, we'll talk about product, product categorization and goods and services quality. So when we look at products, we classify them in several different ways. And so I wanted to uh, point out, I'm sorry, oops, there we go, <laughs> that lost it, sorry. No, there we go. Um, so I wanted to point out several ways in which we look at products and how uh, some terminology you might hear if you end up in the industry uh, dealing with different products. Uh, and so uh, the first term is product line, and this is essentially putting a group of different products that are closely related into one group. Uh, and usually this uh, categorization occurs uh, when things within that, products within that category satisfy some sort of category need, uh, meaning uh, co consumer need. Uh, they're typically used together. Uh, they're usually sold at the, to the same some consumer group, so looking at the same target market. Uh, sometimes distributed to the, through the same outlet and then have certain uh, price ranges that they fall within. So for example, Adidas creates a lot of different products, but a product line uh, for um, Adidas shoes could be performance and style, um, as opposed to soccer cleats or running or um, <clears throat> cross training or anything like that. The other terminology is product mix. Uh, the product mix is basically the assortment of all the different product lines. And so take all of those categories of product lines and put them together and what that company makes, the variety of different product lines, uh, is essentially our product mix. And so we might say that Adidas produces apparel. They also to, uh, produce performance shoes. They sometimes uh, produce uh, clothing. Uh, pretty much any of those things could be uh, the culmination of all of, the, all of those is our product mix. And so let me give you a couple of examples. The first one is what we've been talking about, the um, Adidas example. <clears throat> and so on the top, you can see the horizontal line says the product mix. And that's the breadth. Uh, essentially, this is, if we look at all of our footwear, uh, is a product line. Could include running shoes, basketball shoes, soccer cleats, and so on and so forth. Another product line could be um, our apparel. That's what uh, clothing would be, jackets, shorts. And then accessories, so bags, sunglasses, and beanies, and so on and so forth. So you can see on the vertical line, uh, you've got product line, which is our depth. The culmination of all of our product lines would be our product mix. Uh, an example in broadcasting in sports would be ESPN. So ESPN has a variety of product lines. Each product line is listed here. ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN Classic, HD, ESPN.com, 360, some of these don't exist anymore, but um, ESPN Mobile, uh, Interactive TV, Regional, Zone, Radio, The Magazine, uh, International, Deportes, um, ESPN U, ESPN News, ABC, which is the also a part of that uh, ownership group. Uh, all of those are product lines individually uh, serving a different group uh, or need within the product uh, or in the broadcasting realm. The culmination of all of those is our product mix. <clears throat> Another term is product extensions, and these are the things that you uh, would purchase that you essentially use along with the core product. Uh, core product being, let's say you you bought, um, you went to a game, okay? This is the example that's listed here. So those things that enhance that experience or that product. So if I go to the game, the way I buy my ticket is a product extension. If the team has a variety of options, so the secondary ticket market, which is the resale market example, that would be um, StubHub is a, a retailer within the secondary ticket market. Another one would be Ticket City or SeatGeek. Those are all uh, firms that operate in the secondary ticket market. So if a team had worked with uh, one of those, for example, the way the MLB works with StubHub, you can see that that is an example of a, a product extension for ticketing. The primary market is where the ticket is purchased the first time, so the variety of ticket purchases. So, for example, uh, I could buy it uh, as I walk up to the box office, the old-fashioned way. I can buy them through over the phone. I could buy them online. I can buy them on my mobile devices. All of those are different ways that I buy it directly from the team and, therefore, is a primary market uh, example of a product extension. Or if I operate in some participatory uh, fashion, and we'll talk about that in the pricing chapter, uh, but this is where, uh, essentially, we're looking at um, <clears throat> where the consumer has a say in the final price that they pay. So a name your own price scenario. <clears throat> Another example would be luxury boxes. 
that's an extension to the uh, event um, program. So these will be bulletins, game day programs, those types of things. Video screens, something SFA has invested in heavily in 2016. Uh, music, uh, we'll talk about that in chapter, well, we talked about that in chapter five as well, but um, music is a part of the product extension, memorabilia, uh, and other things such as mascots. The last term I really want to talk about when we talk about brand, uh, products, we'll talk more extensively in chapter eight, uh, is branding. And that is um, the term is basically defined as a name, design, si symbol, or any combination of those things that the sport organization used to help differentiate its products from the com competition. And so brand is not necessarily the products. It's uh, a culmination of things. It's not just what you're creating as far as the good that the or service that the uh, consumer buys. It's the entire experience, so it includes uh, looking at logos, looking at slogans. Uh, so you see here, University of Florida Gator Nation, uh, that's trademarked. Uh, the symbol for Gator, the Gator uh, for Florida, is uh, part of their branding, and that's just a, a part of it. And we'll talk more about branding in Chapter 8. So let's talk about how consumers actually look at goods and services and determine whether or not they're of high quality or not. Because essentially as marketers, our job is to ensure high quality because we know that research shows us that as um, consumers feel like there's a higher quality of the product or, or the good or service that they buy, the more likely they are to repeat that purchase and spread positive word of mouth. So the first way is that we look at service quality. Uh, this is a term called RADAR. It's an acronym. stands for Reliability, Assurance, Tangibles, Empathy, and Responsiveness. So anytime I deal with a service, and we've talked about this already, but it's uh, essentially those that have that intangible nature, uh, there are, is a person involved in it, uh, simultaneously consumed and produced, those types of things, right? So we can't store it up. If we look at reliability, this is the first way that we measure service quality as consumers. We want services that are dependable and accurate. If I hire somebody for my personal training session, and they teach me um, how to do a lift improperly, uh, then I would say that their their inaccuracy in how to teach me is also comes back to assurance in a second, but also affects that reliability having them. Also, if I have a session and I've scheduled that session and they don't ever show up on time, uh, then their dependability is an issue. So reliability is the first one. Assurance, this is basically under, knowing that you have a trust or confidence and whatever they're telling you is actually going to work, uh, whether they have the knowledge uh, is part of that. The tangibles are the physical aspects that surround the service delivery. So we know that we can't store up, uh, touch, or uh, do any of those things with a service. However, there are certain environments in which they operate in. Taking the example of the fitness facility instructor or the, the personal trainer, they work out in a facility. What does that facility look like? The physical surroundings, is it cleanly? Is it safe? Uh, all of this helps with uh, essentially a consumer's perception of service quality, the quality of the service they're receiving. Empathy is the fourth one. This is whether or not they have individual attention for you. Uh, so if you work in, especially if you think about in our circumstance of a, a personal trainer, how many times do you have group personal trainers? Do they actually uh, help you individually? Are they spending more time with one person that um, they may get along with better or click better with? Uh, that you feel like they actually care about your progress. Those are the types of things that come from empathy. And the last one is responsiveness. So if there is an issue, uh, how willing are they to help you with that issue? If there's an issue with the service or a failure in the service delivery, are they willing to do something about it? Uh, and then how quickly are they able to do it or willing to do it? So that's the timeliness. So if a service is reliable, you high levels of assurance, the tangibles are positive, uh, that you feel like they have empathy for you and they respond to any issues you have, then in likelihood it's a positive service experience and therefore, as we said, the research shows at least to repeat purchases and positive word of mouth. So what I want you to do is take as an ex as a um, uh, project or in-class assignment, so to speak, uh, on D2L, I want you to go through, there's an article uh, called Fox Sports Fantasy Football. It's attached to this Dropbox assignment. Uh, I want you to uh, look at the different dimensions of service quality. Uh, did they previously meet those dimensions of service quality in the article? Why or why not? And a reminder of those 
uh, dimensions of service quality, reliability, assurance, tangibles, uh, empathy and responsiveness, the Raider. So I want you to go through and basically do analysis of Raider for the example of famous, uh, Fox Sports Fantasy Football. The last thing I want to touch on is goods quality, and this is essentially uh, how we measure as consumers whether or not a good, again, that tangible product that we're buying, uh, is of high quality. And the same is true. If we feel like there's a high quality product, the more likely we are to reuse that product uh, and suggest it to other people. So typically those things are performance. So does it perform its core function? Uh, if it is a running shoe for trail running, for that example, for, for example, uh, and the function is it for it to withstand um, constant battery with uh, rocks and the elements. Uh, does it do a good job of that? Features, are there any additional features that go along with it? Many times we see, especially in uh, sporting goods, where technology is an innovation starting to come in. Uh, is there a um, benefit that comes along with it? Conformity, so are there any defects to it? So Typically, we know that the good thing about goods is that we can re reproduce them over and over again and have the same similar high-quality outcome with few exceptions. So were there any defects to it? Reliability, is there consistency in the product uh, performance over time? If I use it more than once, is it going to continue to do well? Durability, what is the life of the good? So how long does it last? Uh, does it meet my expectations? If something goes wrong with it, so are we able to service it? Is it easy to fix? Uh, how does that process look like? Uh, and then the aesthetic, so how uh, does it look or feel? And many times people buy it for this reason. So that is uh, products in Chapter 7. Uh, go ahead and make sure you complete all the assignments and move on to Chapter 8.